get to the report itself this afternoon, I want to express how grateful I've been and the opportunity that I've been given by you, the members, and for the honor and privilege of serving as president of the chamber. This year, much detail has been presented in our annual report, and I'm sure everybody should have a copy in front there. And it covers the period from April 2013 up until this month, March 2014. And you will realize from the magazine, it's the thickest magazine I think we've ever done. Uh, it has indeed been a very easy and active year of the Georgian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I must begin my presentation by paying tributes to the Executive Director, Mr. Marissa Lowden, who together with our Projects Officer, Ms. Monique Tiwari, and our Financial Manager, Mr. Omish Singh, formed a team which gave me all the support I needed throughout the entire year. And I just want to say thank you very much. I'll give them a round of applause. We'll start by looking and examining, and I see one of our honorary members now coming in, Mr. Nikolai Smornov, who is the ambassador of Russia. I want to begin by looking at our financial position, and I'll ask Marissa to bring up this slide with the financials. But we've been able to increase significantly, or I should say very significantly, the Chamber's program of activities while also expanding the Chamber's revenue base. This ensures that the Chamber is able to provide and able to achieve our current goals while accumulating the requisite financial surplus to provide for the organization's long-term sustainability. None of this would have been possible, none of it, without the unwavering support of our membership who despite our very, very repeated appeals and intercessions continue to support our programs and activities. If you look at the first diagram there, it gives you the income comparison before last year. I remember last year standing here, I said we had a record year. We were all happy. Well, we broke that record year over the past year. And we didn't just think we shattered it, I think we made $18.6 million more this financial year than the previous financial year, $18,692,000. I had to check these figures just to make sure they were correct, because I didn't even know we were on track to accumulate this amount of revenues. But you see the difference between 2012-2013. Let's bring the other slide up, please. But the difference is almost a 100% turn around uh, from the revenues which we had last year. I just want to say, pertaining to the income, our membership dues account to around six, not more than seven million dollars. So that means 80% of our revenues that in this financial year, the last financial year, came from non-membership dues activities. And you have to also take it into the context in which we operate. We received no financial assistance from the government. We didn't get any support or donor support from any international agency. Even though I wish the Chamber would have uh, received donor financing, because we wanted to set up the trade facilitation and capacity building uh, programs, and even a desk at the Chamber to facilitate smaller businesses and also to prepare our smaller businesses for the export economy. Um, so I spent the past year trying to convince every diplomat, some sitting in this room, every international donor of the utility of allocating loans or grants or matching funds to the Chamber to help build our local private sector's capacity. I know, I know the next executive, or, or I hope the next executive will continue to try to penetrate and hopefully be successful in receiving some grant support in terms of helping the private sector develop in Guyana. With increases in revenues comes increases 
in expenses. So this year we had a $16 million bill to fund our programs and activities. And that was, that was expected because we did more activities that we did, uh, than the previous year. We hired more staff. We paid our staff better than the previous year. We had a television program. We did the mag we did a the magazine publication on our own. Previous year we, years we subcontracted the magazine. This year we did it as, a, as an organization. So, our, our, but despite the increase in our expenses, we still recorded Marissa. We still recorded uh, surplus, which is close to our entire membership dues of six million dollars. Six. Six million four hundred and eighty three dollars seven hundred and eighty seven. Six million four hundred and eighty three thousand sorry seven hundred and eighty seven dollars. Which is an increase of two million to uh, almost two point five million dollars over the previous period. We will now turn to some of the activities that the chamber uh, undertook in twenty thirteen and the beginning of this year. I'll just summarize it briefly while Marissa will just run through some of the slides so you can see some of the activities. We did 11 seminars over the past year, which is almost one seminar every month on various capacity building initiatives. We had the assistant, direct assistant and schemes which we could collaborate with Caribbean Export. Right? We had the leadership training workshop in May last year where we had senior private sector leaders. We had one of dynamic communication. Here we launched our uh, Business Guyana magazine, which is our biggest in Camorna. Um, in fact, over the past financial year, we actually launched three publications. We had the Business Guyana magazine. We had a business directory. Here is the business technology seminar. We also had the competitiveness manifesto, which we published. We had three dinners and a cocktail event. The cocktail was done in collaboration with the Indian High Commission. We had a few staff training activities in house. We collaborated with USA on the Sky program to host an employment database of the Sky program on the Chamber's website so that we could effectively link some of the graduates from that program to private sector companies for employment. We also uh, partnered with CESAR or SASA, I always pronounce this incorrectly. And we did a business and human rights uh, tackling workplace discrimination seminar, which I think we had a very good discussion on the turnout. This is the information session with the Indian High Commission. Every year we do a fire prevention seminar. And in November we had this was the biggest turnout in terms of all these seminars I've seen over the years. So the fire prevention seminar companies are now being more sensitized to the importance of ensuring that their properties meet the requirements of the Ghana Fire Service and also that they're properly insured in the event there's a fire. Those are some of the participants there. Some of the other main ongoing current activities of the Chamber we have are we currently conducting an intellectual property rights research. Uh, we're hoping to have our policymakers update our intellectual property rights legislation to reflect our day, uh, realities. We're also conducting CASO uh, GRA research so that we can see some of the bottlenecks between that agency and our private sector. Pretty soon, next month early, we'll have a human capital development seminar there's a leadership uh, seminar also, I see Walt Dundas in the room, who's responsible and partnered with the Chamber on that initiative. We nominated and appointed our honorary members. We'll do our 125th year anniversary program. We'll have a distinguished lecture series. We've identified uh, some very erudite Guyanese either living here or overseas who come back and talk on issues related to private sector development. We're currently doing a donation drive for the University of Guyana. I know that's going well. Companies have contributed to that fund. We've also 
just started last year, for the entire year, we did a UG internship program where interns would come to the chamber. I know we have one of the interns here present today. We're doing a donation of breathalyzers to the Ghana Police Force. When we heard the police force had just three, I remember laughing and thinking it was a joke until we met with the traffic chief. Um, but this also is going pretty well from our end. I think we've secured 10 breathalyzers from folks in the private sector only this morning. Uh, one of our member companies, Republic Bank, indicated they'll donate about five or six of those fertilizers to the chamber so we can, can hand it over to the Ghana Police Force. We don't just want to criticize some of these organizations, but we want to help these organizations develop. This year, you look at the rebuilding of the Secretariat. We've done the proposals for that, and we've done lots of TV programs. Lance Hines uh, has been our moderator there. And he's done an excellent job as the moderator of that television program, the Chamber's uh, Business Review. During my tenure, I've seen the Chamber's national profile rise prominently as one of Guyana's most visible, active civil society organizations. Much of this effective exposure has been achieved through the many advocacy positions taken by the Chamber over the past two years. Many of these positions are chronicled in the Chamber's uh, competitiveness manifesto, where we identify the top 20 barriers to Guyana's competitiveness. And we've advanced those beliefs through many media, including uh, media briefings, press releases, luncheons, dinners, television interviews, or face-to-face -face discussions with stakeholders, policymakers, the international community. Uh, we have a new website which we use to disseminate all our information, our social media platforms such as YouTube, we have our Facebook. These things are updated daily. Uh, there's no lapse in terms of those. I am sure that personally. Um, and not only because I'm on, always on Facebook, but because I have an interest in sure that we to provide updated and current information. But I just want to repeat some of those advocacy positions this afternoon, and it's, very, it's worth repeating. And I just want to, the policymakers aren't here this afternoon because they have parliament. And most of them couldn't make it, or any of them couldn't make it. I think I see one from the AFC. This is David Patterson sitting somewhere in the back there. They sit at the back so that they can sneak out at any time if this speech goes on for another hour. I don't blame you, David. Um, but we want, we want to tell our politicians and we want to tell our policymakers to put aside their narrow partisan and political ways and do what's in the best interest of our country through effective dialogue and compromises. We want local government elections this year. We want the government to give GCOM all the tools and resources it needs to get this done forthwith. We want an effective AML CFT bill passed in the National Assembly that meets our international obligations. We want programs and incentives that encourages Guyana's best and brightest to stay, to stay and develop our private sector, thus creating more jobs for our country. We want a clear and concrete diversification and manufacturing strategy that removes our dependence on international commodity prices. We want a Guyana Revenue Authority that accelerates and speed up the time taken to process our imports and our exports. We want a National Competitiveness Council that develops, designs, and implements Guyana's national economic policy, policies, and one that is above political rivalry and cycles, and that is reflective of all the major stakeholders in Guyana's economic development. We want a public procurement commission. We want a public procurement commission that ensures a fair and equitable process where the best person or the best company gets the jobs and the contracts from the government execute 
critical developmental projects. We want modern intellectual property laws that respects the ideas of our people and fuels the growth and development of our creative industries. We want a stronger foreign ministry to effectively act as the link between our private sector and the global community and to effectively market Guyana as an investment destination. Those are some of the issues that we've been advocating for the entire year and forms part of our competitiveness manifesto. And we will continue to advocate in the art of private sector on those very important and critical issues. In concluding, I just want to say none of these achievements over the past two years or year I've been talking about would not have been possible through only my actions or my decisions. As in any business or any organization, objectives can only be successfully driven and achieved by a successful team and the dynamic participation and involvement of all the players. And that is what we have here at the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So before closing my final speech as president of the Chamber of Commerce, Allow me to thank all the hard-working members with whom I have worked with closely throughout the past two years, especially the Secretariat, also our Council, the committees and their chairpersons. I sincerely believe that with your help, we as a chamber, we've managed to rise to new levels in terms of influencing critical public policy and also in providing value to our members in added services. I hope that I've lived up to everyone's uh, expectations, and I can certainly say that I've learned, I've learned a lot. It was definitely a worthwhile experience in my own professional life. The Georgetown Chamber will always have a special place to me, and I wish the organization a very good future. Uh, let me close with a final appeal to all our members. The Chamber is only a strong you're only as strong as you want it to be. You know, every time we meet the business community, somebody always say, what? What's the chamber going to do for me? I tell them, if I pull out to the chamber as a member or, or stop giving the service or the participation, think how strong the chamber would be without me or without anyone who sits in front of our council and those who are actively participating. The efforts you're willing to bring to the organization determines the strength of the organization. Not the reverse for the organization, it will be you. It's where you can come, contribute to the organization. And a strong organization ensures that all the other stakeholders listen to your concerns and your issues and have the faith in that behind. It is only then, and with your contribution, the team will continue to be a very strong voice of the band's business community. I want to wish the best of luck to my successor. Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Clinton Arling, members of the executive of the GCCI, members of the diplomatic corps, members of the private sector, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good day to you all. It is a privilege and an honor for me to address you today at the 124th Georgetown Chamber of Commerce Annual General Meeting. 
attaining 124 years of service is quite a feat. I commend the Chamber Executive and members on the commitment that you have shown to investing in business and building Diana's economy. You truly exemplify the spirit of entrepreneur and investor excellence. Investment takes potential and turns it into development. There is little that can match the power and scope of private investment when it comes to innovation, prosperity, and security in developing countries such as Guyana. Without private investment, sustainable economic development is but a dream. Canada remains committed to the Americas and the Caribbean and is working with its partners to increase economic opportunity, strengthen security and institutions, and foster lasting relationships in order to increase private investment in Guyana. Small and medium enterprises are playing a foundational role in transforming economies all across the globe, and this is certainly true in Guyana. Small and medium enterprises are key drivers for sustainable economic growth and underpin any country's economic success. GCC, GCCI's membership and contribution to Guyana's economic development demonstrates this. SMEs can be characterized as the unsung heroes of economic development, with larger companies often taking the spotlight. Keeping in mind the vital importance of SMEs, Canada has prioritized supporting small and medium enterprises in Guyana as part of our objective of engendering sustainable economic growth. In November 2013, Canada funded the establishment of a credit bureau in Guyana to help improve business opportunities and support for SMEs. The Credit Bureau now provides information on prospective borrowers and their credit worthiness so that SMEs in Guyana can access credit to grow their businesses. The Credit Bureau, however, is only one piece of the puzzle. In, la in February 2014, last month, Canada, through the IFC and in collaboration with the Guyana Bank of Trade and Industry, launched the Risk Management Initiative which designs a more comprehensive prediction model that is specifically tailored to the SME sector, one that is not only based on financial ratios derived from accounting data. The timely launch of GBTI's Risk Management Initiative will help small and medium enterprises take advantage of the plethora of commercial opportunities existing in Guyana, including those by the offered by the presence of Canadian com mining companies that are currently building their businesses here. We encourage all members of the Chamber to take advantage of these initiatives. Canadian companies are leaders in the extractive sector, both at home and abroad. And supporting our companies in maintaining this leadership role abroad is a priority for the Government of Canada. We recognize that more needs to be done to assist our firms wherever they work in the world, and to do so using the Canadian model that aligns our political, trade, and development objectives internationally. It is for this reason that last year the Government of Canada amalgamated our Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade with the Canadian International Development Agency, better known as CEDA, into a single Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development. This new mechanism with a somewhat uneloquent uh, 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 new title of DFAT-D, this new mechanism has created a targeted whole of government approach, which allows us to leverage our assets to fully support Canadian industry, bridging the gap between development cooperation and trade activities. This approach has already borne fruit in our cooperation with Guyana. Both the Credit Bureau and the Risk Management Initiative were funded with development assistance in support of trade activities. Sustainable economic growth relies not only on domestic commercial ventures, but on the ability of businesses to trade beyond their borders. Canada is inherently a trading nation. It is in our genes, part of the inheritance handed down by our fur trading forefathers and foremothers. Trade has to a very large extent defined Canada as a nation. Today, international trade represents more than 60% of Canada's GDP, with one in five Canadian jobs linked to exports. Canada has free trade agreements in force with more than 10 countries, which provides Canada a competitive advantage across a wide range of sectors. In addition, we've begun negotiations with more than 60 countries, including some of the world's key markets 
with a combined GDP in excess of $2 trillion. Free trade agreements have proven to be a key driver for Canada's economic prosperity. There is no better way to boost living standards for our citizens over the long term than to expand the markets that they have access to. Canada believes that the Canada CARICOM free trade agreement would bring about further prosperity and sustainable economic growth both to Canada and the CARICOM region and all of our citizens. We further believe that it would complement and help further development the regional cooperation that is already being undertaken in the Caribbean Single Market and Economy Initiative. Canada has benefited greatly from our free trade agreements with other hemispheric partners. We look forward to the successful conclusion of the ongoing Canada CARICOM trade negotiations in June so that Guyana and its private sector, including chamber members, may also enjoy similar benefits. Security is a key aspect in the development of business and the attraction of investment. Businesses play a role in increasing security and safety in their countries. At the same time, businesses require a base level of security in order to thrive in the first instant. To this end, Canada and Guyana have chosen to cooperate on niche key areas of security. In February, we joined forces to tackle the threat currently being posed by the use of fraudulent documents through the implementation of the Fraudulent Document Detection Project. The Fraudulent Document Detection Project strengthens the ability of Guyana law enforcement to detect identity theft and document fraud thereby enhancing Guyana's border security. Training was provided by Canada Border Service Agency and fraudulent document detection kits were provided by the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives. The government of Guyana provided the training facilities and a wide range of very talented officers, from frontline immigration and registry of office officials to CANU and GDF. This project, which is an excellent example of true collaboration, will not only help prevent identity theft and the illegal movement of people through Guyana's borders, but also has an important trade facilitation role by encouraging the quick and efficient movement of legitimate travelers, such as business people, through Guyana's borders. Mr. President, I understand that your tenure at the helm of the Chamber comes to an end today. I've enjoyed working with you and the Chamber since my arrival in September. I have been consistently impressed by your high level of enthusiasm, enthusiasm and dedication on issues of shared interest, from trade negotiations to AML-CFT to enhancing the business environment for companies. I would like to offer my sincere congratulations to you and your team for your hard work and your many successes. I wish you and the Chamber every success as you grow from strength to strength. In conclusion, I am confident that the entrepreneurship and determination demonstrated by the Chamber and its members will inspire a new generation of business leaders to invest in themselves and to invest in Guyana. Canada is a trusted investor, a reliable supporter of local solutions, and a dynamic partner for study, research, business, innovation, and sustainable economic growth. Our engagement in the Americas and the Caribbean region is delivering results both for Canada and for our partners. We stand ready to continue to work with Guyana's government, industry, small and medium enterprises, and all stakeholders to promote investment and strengthen ties further between our countries. Je vous remercie pour votre attention et vous souhaite